आज के डिस्कशन में हम रिव्यूइंग द लिटरेचर कर रहे हैं ये लिटरेचर की जो बात है इसके ऊपर हर स्टडी में हर रिसर्च प्रपोजल में हम इसके ऊपर बहुत एम्फेसाइज करते हैं क्योंकि ये लिटरेचर जो है ये लोगों की रिसर्च हैं आप जब रिसर्च करेंगे तो आपकी रिसर्च भी इसी लिटरेचर का हिस्सा बन जाएगी ये लिटरेचर जो है वो नॉलेज है ऑन डिफरेंट इश्यूज पर्टेनिंग टू द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द पीपल इससे हम ये कहते हैं कि हमें ये विजडम देता है हमारा विजन इसके साथ ब्रॉडन होता है हमारी कैपेबिलिटी इससे पता चलती है कि हमें आ, कितना कुछ ऑलरेडी पता है कि इसके ऊपर काम लोगों ने किया है इस लिटरेचर से हमें यह भी पता चलता है कि कौन कौन सी मेथडोलॉजीज लोगों ने यूज़ की है या यूज़ की जा सकती है कुछ थियरीज की बात पता चलता है इस लिटरेचर में अपने मुल्क के अंदर पता चलता है कि कहाँ कहाँ किस किस एरिया में क्या क्या कुछ काम हुआ है तो इस बैकग्राउंड को देखते हुए रिव्यूइंग द लिटरेचर में जो हमारा बेसिक फोकस है वो ये है कि हम इसको कैसे प्रेजेंट करेंगे कैसे इसको हम अपने प्रपोजल में या लेटर ऑन अपने रिसर्च रिपोर्ट में हम कैसे इसको प्रेजेंट करेंगे तो बेसिकली रिव्यूइंग द लिटरेचर मीन्स दैट वी आर ट्राइंग टू स्टडी द रिसर्च कंडक्टेड बाय अदर्स और जब हम लोगों की दूसरे रिसर्चर्स साइंटिस्ट कॉलिग्स की रिसर्च को रिव्यू कर रहे हैं तो उससे हमें बहुत सारी चीज़ें मिलती है एक तो है कि किसी एक फील्ड में काम कितना हुआ है और जब रिव्यू का बात आ रही है तो रिव्यू डज नाट मीन टू गिव ए समरी ऑफ और टू मेक ए समरी ऑफ वट समी हैज रिटर्न और समबडी हैज प्रोड्यूस रिव्यू में आ रहा है कि एक उसका व्यू था नाउ वी आर लुकिंग इन टू द सेम रिसर्च मे बी फ्रॉम ए डिफरेंट एंगल और दैट एंगल कुड बी द एंगल ऑफ द रिसर्चर दैट कुड बी द रिव्यूअर्स एंगल तो इसमें जब हम देखते हैं तो क्या करते हैं द रिसर्चर्स लर्न दे कंपेयर रेप्लीकेट and critically appreciate the work by others they learn learn from what others have done learn from the difficulties which others had uh, experienced during their researches to so, unse wo learn karte hain ke how to overcome those difficulties methodologies unhone kya use ki hain maybe we make use of the same methodologies और मे एक मॉडिफिकेशन इन दैम इसी तरह थियरीज की बात है हम उनके थियोरेटिकल मॉडल्स को लर्न करके देखते हैं कि कहाँ उसको अप्लाई किया जा सकता है फिर इसमें न सिर्फ कि एक रिसर्चर की बात है पता नहीं कितने रिसर्चर्स का कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन है इन दिस लिटरेचर विद इन द कंट्री आउटसाइड द कंट्री और आज कल के ग्लोबल काइंड ऑफ अप्रोच में तो वे ट्राई टू गेट होल्ड ऑफ द इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया ऑफ रिसर्च आई थिंक फ्रॉम ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड तो वट आर रिसर्चर या रिव्यूअर जिसको हमने जिस एंगल से हम देख रहे हैं द रिव्यूअर इज गोइंग टू मेक और लाइकली टू मेक कंपेरिजन बिटवीन दीज रिसर्च कंपेरिजन लेट से विद रिस्पेक्ट टू अ स्टडी बिंग विच वॉज कैरिड आउट let's in one organization and the other one in another organization and maybe we are comparing the findings or ek mulk mein wo study hui hai usko kisi aur mulk mein kiya gaya hai we are trying to make the comparisons is comparison se hame ye pata chalta hai ke ye jo field hai ya is ye jo research ki line hai ya road map hai ye kis taraf ko ja raha hai kyunki comparison mein we find that certain researches uh, support each other the findings of certain researches support each other 
others uh, might challenge and others might uh, simply might say modify them and others could may uh, just reject them so isme hum learn kar rahe hain isme hum compare kar rahe hain aur isi mein hi hum ye bhi kar rahe hain ki kai researches jo kahi hui hain usko hum repeat kar rahe hain ye replicate kar rahe hain ek research western society mein hui hai we see that uh, how far that research can be replicated let's say in pakistani setting uh dusre angle se dekhe to ek research ek kism ki organization mein hui hai hum usko dusri kism ki organization mein replicate karne ki koshish kar rahe hain because the goal is to come up with something which is uh, truth truthful something which is uh, dependable aur uh, ये देखते हैं कि अगर ए पर्टिकुलर थियोरी हैज बीन एक्सेप्टेड इन वन सिचुएशन विल इट बी विल इट होल्ड ट्रू इन अनदर सिचुएशन इंडस्ट्रियल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की बात है वहां को फाइंडिंग्स आई हैं उसको हम बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में रेप्लिकेट करके देख रहे हैं उसको सर्विस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में रेप्लिकेट करके देख रहे हैं उसको डिफरेंट एनवायरमेंट में रेप्लिकेट करके देख रहे हैं and then perhaps if we are finding that these findings uh, support each other then we are on a sound footing to maybe formulate uh, uh, some theories uh, those theories which might be dependable kind of theories and on the basis of those theories maybe we could make the predictions because ultimate goal of science is to make the predictions Uh, to find out the truth and then on the basis of the truth we try to make the predictions so reviewing the literature actually helps us in widening our let's say vision making comparisons trying to find out ke kahan se kahan tak hum pahunche hain ek particular uh, area mein we can replicate and then also when we are reviewing we are also trying to make a critical evaluation of the previous studies yahan par baat aa rahi hai critical evaluation critical evaluation means uh, we are trying to appreciate something which is uh, good which is uh, methodologically sound or we are going to uh, let's say give our opinion with respect to a study which is faulty and uh, that that idea is not to tear the previous researches apart idea is to learn from them and also try to contribute to those studies by making a critical evaluation or critical appreciation uh, maybe critical appreciation ka lafz shayad zyada sahi hai ke we are giving our views based on logic not based on any फेवरेटिज्म और एनी थिंग लाइक दैट तो आइडिया इज के ये जो पिछली स्टडीज हैं जितनी भी आ रही हैं वी डोंट एक्सेप्ट दैम एज इट इज दैट्स दी आई थिंक दैट्स दी वन ऑफ द करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ साइंस दैट वी डोंट एक्सेप्ट इमीडिएटली बिकॉज दैट्स द काइंड ऑफ बिलीफ वी आर स्केप्टिकल ऑफ द प्रीवियस लेट से रिसर्च इज एंड वी रिमेन स्केप्टिकल Uh, so long as we have not uh, reviewed it and after the review maybe then we can formulate uh, our opinion because uh, anything which is published let us not consider that uh, final let us not consider that as something sacred uh, because uh, lots of things are published people get things published maybe by spending their own money and uh, publications in certain certain uh, i think situations might be a business and uh, people give money and uh, they get their papers published as well so we have to be uh, uh, very i think uh, careful with respect to accepting what is being published or what is being sold out and that we do uh, by critical evaluation and we can do it only if we have i think exposure to different researches which have been conducted in different places 
on the basis of the comparison, we try to come up with the, some, uh, let's say, conclusive kind of judgment about a particular study. So, how will the review look like? Now, in the review, listing of a series of reports with a summary is not a review. It reads uh, more like uh, notes uh, strung together. So, review is not a summary of, uh, of a particular study because uh, summary simply means uh, that we are condensing the uh, written kind of material uh, into uh, fewer words. We are trying to give the shorter version of the bigger ones. Uh, in that, we are not putting our own opinion. We are not making any comparison. Summary simply means we are giving a pressy kind of thing uh, in a more precise kind of way. Now, that if we do that, that will be simply uh, annotated kind of, uh, maybe more like a bibliography. We have study or uske summary de di. So that's more like annotated kind of bibliography. No, that's not the goal of the review of literature. The review of literature looks like that we organize common findings or arguments together and address the most important ideas first to logically link findings and to note the discrepancies. I think that's the idea that we try to make a comparison and try to see where do we move, where are the gaps and where are the researches which are supporting each other. Gaps could be with respect to, let's say, uh, theoretical kind of uh, knowledge. Gaps could also be with respect to the method methodological kind of uh, uh, areas of uh, doing research. So that's, uh, I think, what we have in mind when we are trying to review the literature and then we are trying to make a presentation of that literature. When we are writing the reviewing of the literature, I think I would like to divide it into three parts. One, we try to uh, give some kind of introduction to what we are going to do. Uh, then we are talking about the body of the reviewing of the literature. And thirdly, we talk about the outcome of that reviewing the literature. You might call them as, uh, as conclusions or concluding kind of version of uh, the whole exercise. And obviously, when we are reviewing, we are not covering the whole lot of literature. We are selective. Selective, first of all, keeping in view our topic of research. So, in the introduction, I think we lay down some kind of, uh, let's say, uh, goalposts or some kind of uh, outline ke humne is uh, exercise mein kya karna hai. So, uske hawale se mein ye kahunga ke define or identify the general topic or issue of concern and provide an appropriate context. So, we have the topic of study. We have decided on it. And uh, before actually we do all this kind of exercise, we have already uh, reviewed the literature. We have consulted the material. We have consulted the experts. And on the basis of all that exploratory kind of research, we have decided on a particular topic. Now, all that thing is going to be put in, in the research proposal or later on in the uh, in the thesis or the research report as a particular, let's say, chapter. So, in this introduction, the researcher is supposed to provide the uh, bigger umbrella under which this reviewing is going to take place. So, he is going to tell something, uh, how his topic is going to be related with what he is uh, doing over here. In other words, he is going to give the broader kind of uh, 
background or context within which this uh, review is going to take place. And there he is also going to set the boundaries or limitations uh, within which he is going to operate, he is going to work. So in that respect, point out overall trends in what has been published about the topic. You can talk about conflicts in theory, methodology, evidence, conclusions or gaps in research and scholarship, new perspective of immediate interest. So that's the, I think, uh, main goal that what we are going to get, looking into uh, the consistencies in the findings of the different people, where they conflict with each other, the theories could conflict, the methodologies could be different, the findings could be different. Uh, so that, keeping that, in, uh, that thing in background, now reviewer is going to tell the reader very specifically that what is going to be his, uh, let's say, outline or how much is he going to cover, uh, could also be with respect to the time frame, could also be with respect to the methodology, he is going to lay down all that, uh, I think, in this introductory kind of part. He has to specify that. And there, establish your reason for the review. Establish the criteria to be used in analyzing and comparing the literature. And then, tell how are you going to organize it. And then also state why certain literature is or is not included in this particular review. What we are expecting is that he is going to say, hey, this is what I am going to do. These are the topics which I am going to cover. This is the time period which I am going to. Let me also say over here, whatever he is saying, he has to give the rationale for it. If he is saying that he is going to cover only the five-year period, well, what is the justification for it? If he says that he is going to include only a particular uh, aspect of that issue in the reviewing the in, in the review of literature, well, he has uh, every right to take that kind of decision. But uh, that decision should be supported by the rationale. So, what is to be included and what is to be excluded? I think that's part of the introduction. And uh, I think he is on the safe side if he or she puts all that in, uh, in the introductory kind of, uh, uh, let's say, section of this reviewing the literature, because uh, in that case, uh, the reader may not ask, uh, why did you not include this, this particular, uh, I think, uh, areas of, uh, of, uh, of this issue. Because he has already laid down that he is not going to cover those and he is going to confine himself only to a particular bounded kind of, uh, uh, let's say, reviewing the literature. So there he has given the justification, then uh, the reviewer is not going to ask why did you not include it or why did you exclude it because that thing has already been taken care of in the introductory part of this review of literature. When we move on to the writing of the body, so in the introduction, he is telling again, what am I going to do? Reviewing of literature means what? In this, what will be the focus? In this, what will be the emphasis? In this uh, reviewing, what will be included? What will be excluded? From there on, we move to the uh, next section, which is uh, the main, I think, uh, body of the reviewing of the literature, where the researcher is going to demonstrate that he or she has uh, really given a good coverage of uh, the existing material on the issue or the related kind of issues. So, in the body, it is recommended that group studies according to some common denominator. So one way to do it is qualitative uh, studies could be put together, quantitative studies could be put together, or uh, from the angle of uh, 
methodologies, put certain studies uh, together, or with respect to the themes, uh, we could put certain, uh, certain studies together. So maybe this uh, reviewing the literature with respect to the body where we are talking, it could be, uh, let's say, separated in different uh, sections or different groups. So we uh, try to organize, we try to tell the uh, reader how are we going to organize it. And it uh, gives the organizational kind of uh, approach, okay, this is uh, where we are going to pick up, uh, let's say, methodology. We are going to look at the studies from the methodological an angle, here from the angle of the themes, and at another place, maybe something else. So it could be qualitative, quantitative, then uh, could be with respect to the objectives, and I said, Maybe it has something to do with the chronology as well, means with respect to the time changes. So time changes ki baat bhi usme aa sakti hai ki achha ji, pichli sadi mein kya hua, pichli sadi ke shuru mein kya baatein thi, darmiyan mein kya hui, baad mein kya hui. This might give an idea with respect to the development of uh, certain themes, development of certain theoretical uh, uh, approach or a theory, and even sometimes we talk about the, uh, let's say, development of a particular concept. So that could take care of a chronological kind of approach. So major studies are described in detail, while less important works may be in just one line or two line. And uh, it is suggested that referred to several studies that reported similar results in a single sentence. So that's a kind of advice. Now, if it is a, it's a major kind of study, well, we might uh, give its review in a, in a detailed kind of uh, fashion. We talk about its methodology, we talk about its uh, uh, findings uh, and uh, ulti ultimate conclusions. And if it is not that important, that major kind of study, maybe a small replication someplace. So in that way, those, uh, that study might be uh, taken care of uh, in one sentence. And uh, also, if there are a number of studies trying to uh, give similar kind of results, there we may not review each study separately. We just try to... Uh, merge their findings together and uh, uh, deal them, uh, I think, collectively. In case amongst them or between them there is uh, any, any conflict or any uh, differences in the findings, uh, uh, those could be pointed out. So summarize individual studies with as much or as little detail in accordance with its uh, comparative importance. So space or length denotes its uh, significance. Space, uh, how much uh, uh, coverage we are giving to these, I think that might uh, indicate in itself how important that study is. So summarize and then uh, uh, as I said earlier, it is not the total summary uh, as a uh, presenting a bigger study in a shorter kind of form. Here we are also making comparisons uh, between the studies and we are giving our own opinions about those studies. So provide the reader with strong umbrella sentences at the beginning of uh, the paragraph which we are looking at. So we have the, uh, let us say, taking the reader from one point to another point. So there could be so-called uh, signposts telling the reader, okay, we are moving from here to an, uh, here. That could be with respect to uh, chronological kind of uh, situation from one decade to another decade or from one theoretical perspective which was prominent at one time and to another kind of theoretical perspective which became prominent another time. Or with respect to the introduction of a particular uh, conceptual framework or simply a concept, how we move from one to
to another another uh, from one point to another point so that's more like uh, a moving from let's say point a all the way to point uh, let's say z and there could be the uh, let's say stoppages on the way where we try to give our comments with respect to the findings or the developments in the literature or the studies so use evidence uh, the interpretation of the available sources must be backed up with evidence to show that what you are saying is valid so we are giving a comment on a researcher's uh, let's say a study and we might be saying that uh, there is a some let's say gap in it or there is something which has not been covered now that should not be an assertion from the side of the uh, reviewer uh, assertion in the sense that it has to be or should be supported by the evidence from that particular study uh, evidence uh, uh, may be based on let's say the data which was produced by that study or uh, the methodology which was used by that study uh, it is uh, not that we reproduce uh, the same wording uh, because uh, it is recommended that uh, uh, reproduction of the same text uh, from the uh, study which is being reviewed should be um, should be avoided or it should be uh, limited kind of thing the what is recommended is that whatever was written over there we try to reproduce it in our own words we give the reference and we use our own wording uh, quotations uh, uh, should not be too much in this review of literature maybe certain words are picked up as a uh, as a, within the quotation marks but uh, uh, the frequency of the quotation should be limited so be selective select only the most important points in the review the type of information you use to mention should relate directly to the review's focus that is the theme or methodology or chronology so that's uh, uh, what we are uh, saying that we are not picking up everything the whole study may have so many areas which may have it may have covered out of that we are mainly concerned with that aspect which is relevant to our topic of study uh, if something is not relevant with our topic of study perhaps that should be excluded because uh, the immediately something comes okay what is the relevance of this particular uh, issue so evidence should be provided and let us be selective not that we are going to cover each and every aspect of it because that's that's not our concern and as i said earlier so evidence should be provided but let's avoid the quotations uh, from that particular study so use of uh, course is uh, is limited rather it is recommended that that should be used very sparingly otherwise uh, we might be reproducing what somebody has uh, said rather than interpreting uh, what somebody has said rather than giving our opinion on what somebody has said because when you are giving uh, your own opinion as a researcher you are demonstrating your capabilities your potentials your competency on the subject you are in a position to really give comment and comments based on evidence based on uh, theory based on logic so that is uh, the demonstration of the potential pot uh, the 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 capabilities and the potentials of the researcher and the whole i think exercise is uh, uh, geared toward the demonstration of uh, the capabilities of the researcher so summarize and synthesize do it in each paragraph as well as through out the review so we have started the reviewing of something in that 
perhaps we have reviewed five different studies. We have talked about the comparisons, uh, with comparisons the, with respect to the finding, comparisons of the methodologies, and we have given our comments. But then at the end of uh, that section, we should come up with some kind of concluding uh, summary or concluding kind of remarks. It's, it's, it's good that if we do it uh, as we proceed, because at the end of the section of this review, we may have to give the uh, overall uh, concluding kind of summary for the whole of the review. And if these uh, sections have been summarized uh, immediately at the end of that section, then perhaps it becomes easier to pick up all those, uh, that's the concluding remarks from there and uh, synthesize them, uh, come up with uh, something which is uh, at the end of the whole section. When you are writing uh, this review, keep your own voice. Though reviewing others' ideas, your voice should remain at the forefront. Be careful that we are not forgetting that we have to give our own uh, view. So, your voice as a reviewer uh, should emerge, should be prominent. Although we are presenting others' ideas, but others' ideas are being presented along with the comments, along with the appreciation, which is critical kind of appreciation. So that is how we, we proceed with respect to the reviewing of the literature. Also, use caution when paraphrasing, because be sure to represent the author's information or opinions accurately in your own words. As I said earlier, that uh, we have been advised uh, not to use the quotations or use the quotations very sparingly. Now, that means uh, the views of the writers are to be presented in our own language. So, we are trying to paraphrase uh, the uh, studies uh, of others uh, using our own words. And, uh, in this paraphrasing, we should be very clear that the original message does not get distorted. Uh, original message should be there as it has been presented by the, uh, by the researcher. Now, that is uh, more like uh, give an objective kind of uh, review, let us not bias it. Uh, then also, we use that terminology when we are reviewing, which is familiar with the, let us say, research scholars. Uh, if uh, some new terminology is coming, then perhaps that has to be ex explained. So, the wording, the concepts, the terminology which, it, which is being used in the review, uh, I think that should be very familiar to the audience because uh, we are communicating with the, with the audience and our communication is through our writing. So, double check that you have documented your sources. Whatever we are saying, I think I emphasized it earlier and re-emphasized, whatever we are saying, it has to be backed up with logic and when we are developing our logic, we try to make use of evidence for that. Now, Evidence uh, is coming from, again, uh, different uh, researches. Now, we should be very careful that that uh, credit has to be given to those people from where we are borrowing their uh, literature, borrowing their findings. So, be sure, check second time that our references are correct, our citations are correct, the label of the author is correct, the year is correct, and if at all we have used the actual words, then we may have to give the page over there. So, that is, uh, I think, uh, mandatory, and that is also creditable. Using the evidence from others goes to the credit of somebody, but if we are using something from somebody and not giving the credit, I think that is uh, not on, that does not go to the credit, that goes, that goes to the area of cheating uh, to which we later on 
uh, I'll see that we might be calling it as uh, plagiarism. So bad sign to see every paragraph beginning with the name of the researcher. Now that's uh, another kind of uh, recommendation. I have seen lots of uh, uh, situations where a reviewer is picking up one study and he says Bashir said that uh, Hanif conducted the study at such and such place, Ramzan conducted that study. Each paragraph starts with that kind of approach. And in this, uh, probably the, the reviewer is not actually reviewing the studies, he or she is simply giving the summaries of that. Uh, even if uh, it is not that way, is being reviewed, I think that may not be uh, a good practice. It becomes monotonous kind of thing. So we should not start every paragraph by following the same kind of approach that Bashir said this and Kareem said that and Rihanna said that. That should be avoided. Then organize the review into sections that present themes or identify trends. ये बात पहले भी हुई कि हम इंट्रोडक्शन में बताते हैं कि हम इसको कैसे ऑर्गेनाइज करेंगे तो यहां पर उसी को रिपीट किया जा रहा है कि अपने रिव्यू को डिफरेंट सेक्शंस में डिवाइड किया जा सकता है मेथोडोलॉजी के हवाले से हो सकता है थ्योरी के हवाले से हो सकता है थीम्स के हवाले से हो सकता है और जैसे कि मैंने पहले कहा टाइम सीक्वेंस के हिसाब से भी या जिसको हम क्रोनोलॉजिकली कह सकते हैं वो भी हो सकता है कि अच्छा जी एक सेंचुरी में ये था दूसरी में ये था या फ्लॉ डैकेट उस सेंचुरी के फ्लॉ डैकेट में ये था उसके बाद क्या था तो वी कैन ऑर्गेनाइज इट इन 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 ए डिफरेंट वे बट इफ वी डू इट आई थिंक दैट गिव्स गुड आइडिया कि उस किस्म की जितनी चीज़ें हैं जितनी स्टडीज होंगी आपको उस सेक्शन में या उस एरिए में आपको मिल जाएंगी then synthesize and evaluate the researches to the guiding concept of your thesis or research question but never forget that we are looking at this review in connection with the topic of your research to ye jitni aap studies review kar rahe hain unki findings ko synthesize kare not summarize but synthesize kare synthesize means that we are making a comparison of these and then out of the comparison something uh, certain studies support each others and certain may not support uh, these uh, major findings then out of that what is going to be the conclusion so that conclusion should be there in, and that conclusion might be more like synthesizing the different versions and then you come up with some kind of concluding remarks at the end of uh, that uh, section or that organized kind of section. For example, why sexist language affects persuasion? However, other studies have shown the uh, reviewer is trying to make a presentation. However, other studies have shown that even gender neutral antecedents are more likely to produce masculine images than feminine ones. And then he says, Hamilton asked students to complete sentences that required them to fill in pronouns that agreed with gender neutral antecedents such as writer, pedestrian, persons, director, manager, worker, liberal. This is such a thing as we give an example that father and son were traveling on a road and they met an accident. The father was killed over there. The son was taken to the hospital, was to be operated upon. Uh, says the, the surgeon looked at the, at, the, at, the, at the child and he said, I cannot operate on this child uh, because this child is my son. The surgeon moves out. There is a chamber for that. The surgeon is sitting over there, might be crying over here. Now here we have used the word surgeon. Now we are asking, let's say, if surgeon is to be replaced by the pronouns, what people are, what people are going to replace it with? Is that surgeon going to be uh, replaced with the pronoun of he or she? 
So that's the kind of thing which we find that the researchers do and this is the kind of example uh, which this uh, Hamilton uh, the study is going to uh, be presented with. So that is how it happened. The students were asked to describe any image they have when writing the sentence. Hamilton found that people imagine 3.3 men to each woman in the masculine generic conditions and 1.5 men per woman in the unbiased kind of condition. So this is uh, the context because um, in my example when I say surgeon, people usually have an image of a surgeon that that surgeon is uh, always a male. So when they talk about surgeon, so they are looking, we are talking about the director and people have the image the director is going to be the male. We are talking about the laborer, laborer is in most of the cases considered to be uh, a male. So that is the framework, that is the context, that is the image or uh, sex biased kind of uh, image or sexism which is prevalent in the society and that is how the researchers try to come up with something uh, and uh, this is the kind of detail with respect to the methodology which the researchers have used and this reviewer is uh, not only presenting the main theme and he is also trying to elaborate on the way it has been uh, let us say used over here. And finally we could also say that whatever the studies have been uh, reviewed, is it possible to give all these studies in a tabular kind of form? Can we make a table? And in that table, each must be accompanied by an analysis that interprets and synthesizes the whole thing. And in that, definitions of terms and concepts could be in one column, research methods used could be another column, and then summary of results could be put another in another kind of column. So we have uh, reached a certain situation now. We have to uh, give a summary kind of conclusion um, of the whole review. Now one way to give that uh, uh, summary conclusion could be in the form of a table. Uh, that is also possible and uh, in certain situations that might be recommended. And in this table we might make let us say certain columns and we are focusing on concepts, then the definitions given by the different researchers, then the methodologies used by different researchers, then maybe the findings. And this gives a whole summary of uh, the different uh, studies which we have reviewed in this uh, particular exercise. Now beyond that, we try to find out uh, or give a summary of the contributions of major studies um, which have been reviewed over here. We have, as I said earlier, in the introduction we laid down some specific kind of area within which we are going to review. Now those major studies which were selected relevant to the topic of our research now, what have they contributed? Uh, now, contributed to the body of knowledge. I think that summary, summarized kind of conclusion uh, needs to be given over here. Now, in that, we could specifically talk about evaluation with respect to as the major methodologies, flaw, methodological flaws or gaps in research, the inconsistencies in theory and findings and areas or issues pertinent to the future study. So we, in the review, we looked at the methodologies, okay, how did we uh, come up with this, the comparisons and out of the comparis comparisons, what was the uh, dominant kind of uh, emergent methodologies being used or being, uh, let us say, advocated. Uh, then it can also tell us uh, some of the areas where there are gaps and those gaps are to be filled let us say by the new researchers and that gap could be one way to pick up an area for research. And it is possible that you as a researcher when you were reviewing 
and you found out those gaps and maybe your research is uh, uh, rather significant in one way that it is going to fill out that particular gap which is existing in the body of knowledge at, at the moment. And then writing on that, conclude by providing some insight into the relationship of uh, the findings of this review of literature to the topic of your study. Because this review was all within the framework of uh, the topic which you have selected. Now you tell something about how this review or the findings of this review are relevant or are going to helpful to the conducting of this study or how this study is uh, linked with this uh, review of literature or uh, if I don't use the word review of literature, I use the word the body of knowledge which you have come across. So what is the linkage between your study and the existing themes or the existing body of knowledge? Because uh, if uh, the, our research is not linked and that I, this is true about all the researches, if the researches are not linked with the existing body of knowledge, then the knowledge does not grow. So for the growth of knowledge, the new research has to have some linkage with the existing body of knowledge. Now you might say something that on after this review, you find that how your uh, uh, topic of research can be linked and when you complete this study, how this is going to contribute to the body of knowledge, what I use the word as basic research. Now that comes to some kind of uh, end of the review of literature and you have to be very particular with respect to the references because uh, picking up material from different places is all creditable and you have to give all kinds of references and if we don't give these references that becomes a little bit uh, cheating let us say uh, over here. Then I also say that review by and large it should be spread over three to six pages um, although there is no sacred kind of thing but uh, three to six pages is a big margin. Now, as I said that if we don't give credit to the people from where we borrowed the material now that is a uh, cheating and that cheating has been considered uh, very prominently under the a label of plagiarism and I would suggest that we don't want to uh, get this label, we want to be honest, we want to give credit to the people and similarly the others are going to give credit to your research when they are going to make use of your study or uh, your study is also going to be a part of the review of literature by others and then how are they going to give their comments if that kind of uh, uh, let's say uh, citation uh, is not given over here. So plagiarism is an issue and a very prominent issue uh, let's say in our country as well and I would suggest that we would like to avoid that kind of thing. So in publications, presentations, writings, the researchers explicitly identify, give credit and reference the authors when they take data or material verbatim from another person's written work, whether it is published, unpublished or electronically available. I think that is part of the ethics of research. Now ethics of research demand that we credit, uh, give credit to the person from where we got this material, whether it is a written kind of material, whether it is a uh, electronically retrieved, whether it is from the thesis and even sometimes people try to give credit to the uh, verbal kind of ideas given by uh, let us say some, some specialist, some uh, professionals kind, kind of thing. And let me also say that that ethics prevails or it is operative at every step of our research. And review of literature is uh, part of that and review of literature is one which is uh, 
misused in many cases and where uh, if somebody is caught then I think he faces the consequences. So finally ethics of research ki agar baat mein ki hai to is mein ethical behavior jaysay ki mein kaha it pervades each step of research process data collection data analysis data reporting and even dissemination of the information i i would say even from the selection of the topic all the way to the formulation of the hypothesis uh, different kind of methodologies i think ethics uh, is there right in the beginning if we are talking about a certain topic we look into the ethics of that research will we be able to do research on these people who on whom we want to do it will it be ethical to go into the let's say private lives of the people so starting from the topic all the way to the presentation of the findings at, at the all stages of the research process i think ethics are involved so i think that's uh, very important that we uh, are conscious of uh, these ethical considerations uh, and review of literature is uh, such a sensitive kind of area which people use it rightly or wrongly rightly it's creditable wrongly that is unethical i think this is how we look into the whole exercise of uh, giving the review it has to be uh, linked with the Uh, topic of study so you are very selective we are picking up only that which is relevant and we try to uh, divide it into let's say three sections introduction body of the review and then the conclusion kind of thing and we uh, lay down the framework right in the introduction and then we try to present the findings uh, relevant to our study and later on at the end we try to say what did we get and whatever we got how this is contributing to the body of knowledge and how this is linked with our topic of research and thereby you might say how your study is going to uh, contribute to the main body of knowledge and thank you very much